the machine itself has evolved and opened up all kinds of new doors for me. But like I was saying, you can only get out of this what you're able to put into it. And so easel software um, is simple to use if you are used to using apps. I'm 56 years old. Um, the first computers I used were actually at JMU. They didn't have a screen on it. They literally printed out the response with a dot matrix printer. So you'd say 56 divided by nine. And you tear off the piece of paper. Yes, I'm that old. And so the learning curve for me has been kind of rough. My son, who of course went to school for this, it was real easy for him. And most of the carbs we've done early on were done by him setting it up. Well, he's been gone for the last week and I've been um, a little bit intimidated actually, trying to figure out how to do some of these things. But I realized, after watching a few YouTube videos and things, it's not as hard as I thought. So, things I've learned along the way. One, I have gone through with my Inventables and I've tried to make it as um, user-friendly as possible and to streamline it. I have a very small workshop and this is the 4x4 Pro version. This is big. Um, but what I've done in my workshop is, is I've basically taken my table saw and oversized my outfield table so it's actually like a workbench. And it also does double duty because then I'm able to actually put a full sheet of plywood on here once I learn how to use cutting out for cabinets. Put a whole sheet of plywood in there and be able to move it forward. Um, I've got 38 inches I can go past it so I can get almost that whole 4x8 sheet if I use the um, full capability of it. Um, the nice thing for me is I can turn the machine on. It does its thing. I still have plenty of space in my workshop to be able to do other things, to go ahead and hand paint these pieces because that's actually what happens. Once it cuts it out, I end up painting in the colors of things and doing the finish on it. So from that aspect, it works great. Um, I'm glad that I got the pro version because this cut that I did yesterday uh, for this Corvette was a nine hour cut. And I'm not sure that the smaller routers are going to be able to do that long for very long. So having this machine doing that for that long has been great. My only problem is here, and I'm learning, is you better be damn sure that you've got the piece clamped down properly. I had two issues yesterday. I was doing this big butcher block here. And two mistakes for me. When I uploaded the picture of this map, I just wanted the map to be in here. And it had a little dot over here and a little dot over there. And I thought, well, it's okay. It's outside of the field of the cut. Well, the machine decided it's got to go to that point, even though the wood's not there. And I had... One of my clamps I had one of my clamps over there and it went over there hit the clamp so hit the clamp I hit stop oh, excuse me. I hit stop then the machine uh, and reset it up got another piece of wood in there um, went to go use the machine set up a new piece of wood in there and turned it on spindle wouldn't come on started over with the renew drawing and all that tried it again went through all the steps wouldn't come on found out you gotta have to do a hard start turned it off unplugged it plugged it back in good to go second problem was because I didn't put the clamp on the other corner or to me in the middle like I did because I said I don't want this to happen on my nine hour cut yesterday it moved so it got out of skew and this piece is no longer good so we are learning as we go on here a make sure you got it clamped down good. And what I'm going to do differently when I redo this one is make sure that I put in here, I'll put some of these small ones 
here to make sure that it can't move uh, side to side. The wood clamp. I'll put some of these this way so that way it can't move either way. In fact, I'll do it more like that. So that way it'll hold it square. So that's another thing that I learned um, on here. So um, something else, somebody asked, where did I put my computer? Well, what I did is I actually built this little shelf right here, which is great because the computer sits here and I tried to make it and say, well, in the future, I may not want to use this. So I actually use uh, piano or, or excuse me, chest lids covers here so I can actually drop it down if I'm not really using it or if I need the extra space to put together some cabinets that will actually fold up and get out of the way the stop button is actually right over here which is convenient the only bad thing about this is it's backwards from where you're going so when you're going through and you're jogging the machine and stuff it's opposite of what you see here no big deal you get used to it um, I probably could have made this wider this way and then had it sitting here so that way it is more true to it, but I don't want to take up any more space than I have to, and I'm actually using a small computer here. Um, another thing that I found out too is, and I'm not sure why, but the smaller the hose with a full dust collection system, the less the suckage is on it. I don't understand the dynamics of it. You know, shop back, shh, you know, the bigger the hose is, the worse it is. It's the opposite for a uh, dust collector. I have an Oneida three horsepower dust collector that, you know, I'm using the uh, five inch hose for the planer and it's just <laughs> sucking out chips like crazy. But when you use the hose that actually comes with this, I think it's like an inch and three quarters or an inch and a half hose, you don't get much velocity with that hose on here. And so I kind of modified what I'm doing. Instead of uh, using here, there's actually a bar that fits in the corner here with an arm that can actually swivel for the hose to go on it. Well, the hose is like 10 feet, 12 feet long. I don't want to run a shop vacuum for nine hours. It's too loud, it's too noisy. Not that the, the um, dust collector is not loud, it's more of a hum. So it's kind of like, mm, and it's made to be able to run for hours and hours and hours. So thinking about using a shop vacuum for nine hours straight, I don't think that they're gonna last for very long either. So what I did, and you can see up here because I've got basically, and that's the dust collector over there. I actually have a uh, eight inch main line that comes off of the dust collector and then it reduces. This is a six inch main that drops off into a, a five. And so I've gone through and you can see it up there. Uh, I've got a four, out, four inch outlet, and then I have the two and a half inch hose. This gives me more velocity coming out of there. And since it's hanging up there, this can move all the way around without having any problems of uh, hitting anything. So that works actually better. Um, the amazing thing is, is using this, I have so much less dust than I typically do because it's sucking it all up really well. And even with this port open, I can open up the table saw ones or the other ones as well and still be able to have good suction, especially over here when I have my edge sander and I edge sand these pieces and stuff. Um, so I don't create a whole lot of dust. That works great. The other thing I did over here when I built the center is I basically made this so I have storage for extra materials. These are blank butcher blocks down here. I think I've got about 18 or so in here. And I built basically some drawers in here to keep all the tools, the wrenches, to change those. Still need to get it a little bit better organized. I'm still just learning my way here with the unit. So all of these things so far have been really, really good. The work that I've been able to produce has been good, except for a few hiccups here and there, which are not the machine's fault. They're more of my fault of not uh, understanding everything to the nth degree. And I think that of course will come with time. I'll get better with it. Um, worthwhile wise. And again, I've only had this for um, about five weeks or so. I think about five weeks. Um, and I haven't really even tried to advertise doing this. People, of course, I'm a YouTuber, seen me working my shop and they'll inquire and say, hey, I want one of those. 
um, just from that standpoint, it's been great interest-wise for people, and I realize the capabilities of the things that I'll be able to do with this are almost endless. And as I go through um, developing a new strategy for business where I do custom pieces, uh, things like, for example, we do um, like this grandfather wanted his kids. Now, the easel software, like I was saying before, easel software is very easy to use. It is. It's very simplistic. Um, and it comes with the inventables when you purchase it for the three years. And I'm grateful for that. But when you start talking about the true 3D carvings, like when you see uh, some of the videos, you'll see like an eagle's head and everything else. You're going to have to use other software and then import that to easel. The machine can do all that, just the software can't. So that's another thing that, that I'm going to have to learn too after I master using easel. Um, and like I said, I have yet to put like a full sheet of plywood or anything like there to do cabinets. Right now it's been doing butcher blocks and, and pitcher plaques, just starting out easy to get the feel for the machine. And after you get the feel for the machine, then you want to try and take it up to other levels. And that's where I am right now. But I have to say, I wake up in the morning and I'm excited about being out here and being creative, uh, being creative. Uh, with different projects. Um, the project I'm working on over here right now that I'm getting ready to cut out is, and let's see if I can get you down low enough to see this. This project right here, it's actually a 2006 Corvette. And the gentleman wanted to go ahead and have, of course, the shadows in here. I like the shadow boxes. And we've got the Corvette emblem that'll go on there. And what we'll do is, after that's done, we'll go through, we'll paint in black in the background and in some cases I'll go through depending on what the customer wants we can do colors of course takes more time I could color the checkerboard that's in there the way it is uh, and the red that's on there for more detail or we just do it as a shadow and then we backfill it with the epoxy resin and you end up with a really unique piece that you just will absolutely positively love when we're done um, for example, over here, Puerto Rican flag, and you can see the depth in here with the cuts. And so when you fill this in with the resin, the depth, and depth that's in there ends up really just making an incredible finish on them. And so, yes, I would say if you are... If you are into doing a lot of woodworking, if you're looking into creating a business out of it, rule number one to me is if I'm going to buy a piece of equipment, don't just buy a piece to say I bought a piece. At first, because of the cost, I was looking at, uh, like so I said, I'll just get a small one. I'll get a little Fox Allen, you know, it's a $1,200 for their the top of the line one on you know Amazon you can buy it from and you can do 16 by 16 cut area I said I can get that and it'll start out but then you start thinking about how much power does it have how much capability does it have uh, how long will it last so then I started thinking and looking and saying if I'm gonna be in you know in for a penny in for a pound if I'm gonna look at doing that I need to make sure that I'm not gonna turn around and have to replace it in six months or a year because I can't do what I really want. And that's where I started looking at the inventables. And I was looking at just the X carve and thinking, okay, you know, that's a, quite a bit more money for that one, but it's capable of doing a lot more. So then I started saying, okay, that's $2,500. The thing that stopped me from getting that one was one, it wasn't quite as big as I wanted. And two, I worried about if I do a lot of work with it, having the router motor in there as that power head. I've got tons of trim routers and stuff here, but I'm thinking about if the machine has to work that much, if you're using this thing every day, you're gonna be buying those motors over and over again. The second part I looked at and said, it's not really big enough if I wanna use plywood and make cabinets out of something that I already do a lot of if I decide to do those. and 
Um, the third thing was I saw assembling the X carp. They say 16 hours if you are good. And I felt like I don't work in a factory. I'm not putting this thing together like that. So I started looking at the X carp pro and was originally going to get the two by four one. In fact, I ordered one and thank goodness that they actually have financing for it because I wouldn't have had the money to buy it. Um, but because of the problem we all have right now in every industry from avocados to two by fours the price of materials and getting um stuff is just out of stock um they were short some of the pieces for the two by four unit and so they said it'll be the end of february before we get the parts for it and i was like mm, i don't want to wait that long because there's no guarantee that you're going to get those parts when they say they do uh, I'm still waiting on parts for my dishwasher uh, six months later. So they said we can get you the bigger one. And I'm glad I got the bigger one because I see the capabilities. And when I start renovating uh, this 200-year-old house that I have, I may be taking and making full-size doors and doing some intricate detail and know that I have a machine that I can do almost anything that I want design-wise. And so, yes, for me... It's truly worth the money that I paid for it, uh, at least five weeks in. And I would say um, this machine, I don't never used any other ones, so I can't tell you how they are against other ones. But for me, this machine is freaking amazing, and it's definitely worth every penny that I've made. I paid on it. Actually, I've only made one payment on it. First payment today. Today. Today is the first payment on it. And I look forward to making every one of those payments because it's worth it. Shout out to the guys in Inventables. In the meantime, the machine only makes money when it's working. And I need to get it working here so it can make some money. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe to the channel. And, um, if you're interested in any of the stuff that we have, um, we're updating my website because it's actually evolved. Um, and it's cowboyjoboo.com. And we are doing anything you can imagine sports room related wise for your sports room or your man cave. We are going to make sure. And we're going to be coming out with all kinds of stuff for it because of this machine. So have a great day and get your CNC machine.